Campy. Thank you. God dang it. Five seconds in. <laughs> Thank you for that incredible introduction. I love you very much as well. I've had many amazing coaches in my life, but no one had quite the impact that you did. I've never had another coach that cared about his guys as much as you do. And that goes a long way in an offensive line room. You taught me many techniques to get me to the level that I was able to achieve. Z's in your knees and elbows and pulling the guy in on pass pro. But more importantly, you taught me how to be a good man, have fun, wear my heart on my sleeve, and live life with passion and love. Thank you, Yemi. Thank you to the Green Bay Packer organization and the Green Bay Packers Hall of Fame for this incredible honor. It's truly a blessing, and it wouldn't be possible if you guys didn't believe in me. And thank you to the best fan base in the entire world. There's nobody better than you guys. When I was in kindergarten, we had a class assignment to write down what we wanted to do with our lives. I said I wanted to play soccer because I was really good at it and humble, I guess. I wanted to play baseball because it was my favorite sport. And I wanted to play football for the Dallas Cowboys. Boo. I didn't get to play for the Cowboys, but I did get to win a Super Bowl in Cowboys Stadium. Never in my wildest dreams did I imagine I would have gotten drafted by the Green Bay Packers the greatest organization in all of sports, and be standing here today accepting introduction, induction into this exclusive club. Fast forward to seventh grade, and I was a chubby Jonathan Taylor Thomas lookalike, <laughs> and I decided that I was too embarrassed to take my shirt off at soccer practice, so I switched to football. <laughs> Thank God for preteen insecurities. Best decision I ever made. Shout out to Coach Moody for teaching me the basics of football and helping the Sacred Heart Raiders win the eighth grade championship and igniting a fire and desire to win inside of me. In 2002, son of a, water break. In 2002, I was at a crossroads with my life, and I was deciding how serious I wanted to be about football. I'd missed a handful of workouts in the summer, and my brother knew about it. If I missed one more, the coach told me I could no longer be on the team. One night, I stayed out way too late at a friend's house. Dan, you're here. Thanks to your mom for being gone that week. <laughs> the next morning, I woke up late to 35 missed calls. As soon as I grew the courage to call my brother back, I looked out the window and there he was, waiting to whip my ass into shape and make sure I got the weightlifting. I had a three hour conversation with my coach that day after I ran stadiums for a couple of hours. And that's the day that I decided to commit my life to football. Every Saturday night in the NFL before games at the hotel, I'd call my brother George we would also talk on my way to every game and as soon as the game was over. He would tell me how fat I looked in our white jerseys, <laughs> give me the rundown on how I played, and tell me how many times Chris Collinsworth shouted me out. <laughs> Thank you for all those phone calls, Georgie. Love you, buddy. Him and my cousin Will have been my biggest fans since I was a kid. I love you guys. 
In late 2003, Coach George O'Leary makes the move to UCF, and I get a call that they want to sign me at a time that my offers were very limited. George, you were by far the hardest coach that I ever played for. And you made me damn near want to quit every day. But when I got to the NFL, I was never late for a meeting. And I thought it was kind of a piece of cake compared to playing for you. <laughs> thank you for seeing something in me and installing a never quit work ethic. And thank you to my UCF teammates, especially the couple that are here. Dan Veenstra, thank you for flying here from Italy to come see this. and Dominic Ignelzi for giving me some of the best memories from college. A few, a few more years go by, and in 2008, I hear some rumblings from my agent and good friend, Jack Real, that I had a chance to get drafted. Jack, thank you for walking me through the draft process and holding my hand throughout my entire career. I love you, buddy. Jack connected me with another friend and mentor, Andy Harbour. Andy's been by my side as a business and financial advisor since 2011. Thank you, Andy. Jack also connected me with John Dorsey back in 2008, who was a scout in Green Bay at the time. I had been holding out hope that I would get invited to the Senior Bowl, and John quickly deflated my dreams and said, you ain't getting invited to the Senior Bowl. Now get your fat ass on the airplane to Hawaii so we can see you play in the All-Star Game. And thanks to those tough words, I was able to play in an all-star game and get my name out there, where there was another scout who no doubt got to see me play. His name is Brian Gudicus. You guys might know him. Goody was the slickest and slyest scout ever. I never saw him once or ever heard from him. But he wanted to draft me, and he was able to convince the late, great Ted Thompson to take a chance on me. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you from the bottom of my heart, guys. Also, thank you to Coach McCarthy, Mark Murphy, Russ Ball, and every single coach, scout, and person in the Green Bay Packer organization who helped me along the way. Especially you, Mark Labatt. Thanks for stretching me out and having philosophy talks to keep me zen. <laughs> and always talking about the weather. And Rob Davis for always keeping it real with me. There were a lot of great people that went unnoticed in the building, and there's a few here that are tonight, few here tonight. Nate and Flea, thank you for always trying to keep me healthy. Along with Kurt, Doc McKenzie, Doc Gray, and the entire crew, thank you. People like Kathy Dwarak, Sherry Schultes, who took care of us and our families, and Jonathan Butnick, Jason Wallers, Tom and Sarah, who helped us navigate the treacherous and sometimes scary Green Bay media. Thank you very much. I had the honor of playing next to three or 400 players in my time. Um, don't fact check that, I completely made that up. <laughs> Thank you to every single one of you who daily made me a better player and helped me achieve our goal of winning a Super Bowl. There's a few here that I'd love to mention. AJ Hawk, Mark Tauscher, Chad Clifton, TJ Lang, David Bakhtiari, Ryan Taylor, Matt Flynn, JC Treader, Marshall Newhouse, Clay Matthews, Corey Hall, Breno Giacomini, Tim Massey, John Coon, James Jones, Brett Good, and Mason Crosby. And one, and one who's not here for pretty obvious reasons, Aaron Rodgers. I could not have had my career without you, man. You took me under your wing. You mentored me, befriended me. And gave me the most incredible decade of my life. And Jordy, thank you for being a leader who I looked up to. As a player and as a man, I couldn't have a better person to come into the league with and enter the hall with. None of these relationships would have been possible if I didn't have support from my family and friends back home. 
all of my buddies, you know who you are, plus Nugars and Maria, <laughs> who have always had my back and have always kept me grounded by treating me the same as you did in the year 2000 when we all met. The same crew that painted your bodies green and gold was sitting 71 all over you at my first preseason game. And to my original blocking coach, Big Fig Michael O'Sullivan, thank you. To my sister, Rebecca, I know you're not feeling good right now. The only one in the group who truly doesn't care about football and always was able to talk to me on a deeper level about things that really mattered. I still remember driving to DeLand after games in college. And being able to get away from the stress in your tiny apartment. I love you, Beck. Mom, watching you work your ass off throughout your Navy career and continue that and everything else you've done always gave me a sense of pride. It taught me I needed to work that hard too. You taught me to never start something you couldn't finish and I brought that with throughout my career. I love you. Big Al, you taught me the importance of working not just hard but smart taught me how to love a woman the right way and be a father, even though you didn't have to be. I love you. My amazing in-laws, Brett, thank you for being such an amazing, caring, and loving brother to me and my beautiful wife. And Wanda, thank you so much for raising such an incredible woman. One who is strong and independent. One who didn't take nothing from no one. One who whooped my butt into shape but also has the biggest heart in the world. Kristen, I would be absolutely nowhere without you. They say there's always a great woman behind every great man, but I don't believe it. Because you were always out in front, leading me and teaching me how to be a better man and showing me how deep my heart could love someone. I would not be standing here without you. Do you remember the time you took a Greyhound 23 hours to, to make my first start at Lambeau Field? I do. Love you. And lastly, to my beautiful, smart, and funny, and loving children, Thank you for always being the reason I wanted to have this career. I didn't know you when I played football, but I always knew that this would be for you one day. You've always been the inspiration that has driven me to chase my dreams. All that I ask is that you chase even bigger ones. Daddy loves you. Go Pat, go. <laughs>